Jill Doherty uh, now with us. So I want to get some analysis from you. I mean, you're formerly uh, the bureau uh, chief in Moscow. You know it well. And even throughout this three-day election cy cycle, we've been seeing sporadic acts of defiance here and there. But does it have any impact at all into the direction of, of Vladimir Putin's leadership? I don't think it will have an effect, obviously, on the vote that's already over. But I found it very interesting, that comment by one person in line uh, that Matthew mentioned. He said, I came because I wanted to see other people. And I think this is one thing that the opposition wants people to know, that they are not alone, that there are other people in the country who feel the same way they do. And that is very difficult in Russia sometimes because essentially you can't go onto the streets anymore. You cannot protest. You can't like things on you know, social media. You can be arrested very easily for any sign of opposition. And so knowing that there are other people who do not support Putin actually is significant. It's very hard to measure, obviously, but I think, uh, you know, cumulatively, it's an important thing. Uh, do you find it remarkable that there are people, we saw many people in terms of these, you know, examples of acts of defiance, many people who are willing to be seen uh, you know, putting dye into a, a ballot box, lighting fires, um, speaking of defiance and, and um, outright opposition to Putin. They're willing to take these kinds of risks. Um, does that strike you, uh, given that there have been so many people arrested? Uh, you know, people have lost so much, especially after Navalny's uh, death. Um, in their forms of protest, but people still don't seem to be at all, or at least a large number of people don't seem to be at all afraid of the repercussions. Well, you know, the um, incidents like the pouring ink and things like that, I still think have to be defined. I'm not quite sure who those people were or exactly why they were doing that. Mm. But I think the lines that came out, but especially in Russia, not only in Europe, because it's easier in Europe, obviously, if you're a Russian in Europe, uh, to show up in those long lines. But the long lines within Russia, I think, are really significant. Remember, that woman in line said, you know why we're here. Yeah. They were here, at least supporting, uh, you know, the, the call by Navalny to do that. So um, I think, you know, it, it, we'll have to see again how this plays out, because the, the Kremlin did not want this to happen. They did not want people to show up in big lines at the end. And that type of protest, to me, is almost more significant mm -hmm. than anything um, that we saw, you know, with destruction of ballots or anything like that. Joining us now from Florence, Italy, is Alexander Balnov, senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Alexander, it's always a pleasure to speak to you about Russian affairs. Now, obviously, there was no credible opposition candidate standing in this election. But in terms of the mechanics of the voting itself, how free and fair was that? It's absolutely unfree and unfair. It's clear. And we see the increase of the result every second, every next election, a uh, re-election of Vladimir Putin gives us give 10 percent more like 60%, over 60% in, uh, in, tw uh, in 12, uh, 12, in, in 2012, then over 70, and then over 80. This 80, is, the reason is clear. Uh, Putin has taken an unprecedentedly uh, irresponsible, immoral uh, decision to invade Ukraine. Now he has to show that this decision is supported by the majority that is larger than ever, uh, which is a way to redistribute, to share the responsibility for this decision uh, with the whole of the country. Uh, it is, uh, you know, a big mandate, though, in his eyes, isn't it, presumably for the war in Ukraine, and it means he's going to push even harder, like something like 90 percent. It was his policy to go into Ukraine, so he's got the public support now. Uh, it's ex expected, largely expected, that this uh, number will be interpreted uh, as a support of the war. But it's technically impossible. If we go 
uh, to even official numbers of the supporter of the so-called special military operation uh, by, by, by the citizens of Russia, we see this uh, high number of 80 and more percent uh, uh, for the war till the victory only in one uh, particular group of people, of group of some age. And in all other groups, they are much less, like 60, 50, and then the group younger than 30, it's less than uh, 20%. So this support, at least to interpret this result of 85% uh, as a support of, for the war of 85% of population, it's technically impossible, even uh, taking into account uh, the official numbers, the official sociology. Now go to the voting abroad, to this unprecedented uh, uh, numbers of people who voted abroad uh, that first show us how many Russians have moved outside of Russia uh, since the beginning of the war, and then what the result could be uh, without the reach of this uh, pol political, technological, administrative mobilization and resource that exists inside Russia and uh, without uh, the reach of Russian propaganda, at least the restricted reach of Russian propaganda. It's totally different numbers. Given that the result of this election was a foregone conclusion, does this uh, illusion, is not quite the right word, but does this illusion of a mandate actually change anything in terms of Vladimir Putin's actions? Does it embolden him domestically, internationally in some way? Uh, we, we have seen Vladimir Putin yes, yesterday speaking to the uh, member of his campaign, but in fact there was no campaign, by the way, from his side, no typical, typical uh, electoral uh, campaigning. He was just present as a president in the news, as a leader of the country in the news. Uh, he, is, he is obviously pleased with the result, uh, but there's another uh, significant um, moment in, in this unprecedentedly high number. Before that, uh, Russia was developing as a sort of sp peculiar, specific, but Western-style political system, with many exemptions, but still there were some uh, niceties to be observed. So 60%, 50-something, 70-something maybe, but with 85 and uh, fifth presidential term of the same person, it goes to the absolutely different lead, as an absolutely different political space, non-Western at all. And this rupture with the Western political institutions, with uh, Western political decorations, is basically the message of the Russian regime to the rest of the world. FT5 does mean uh, that we are, that does mean that we are not following Western patterns anymore. We are uh, building something sovereign, something totally different. We see this number only in, China, in, 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 the, in uh, some Asian autocracies or the European autocracies in the past, of course, or in the Central Asian countries, but not in Russia before. So Russia stops being, uh, even imitating Western political system. It's totally sovereign in its political institution. This is the message. And I would expect the re somehow of the political system and electoral results in the future, because in the Soviet Union, we had the results of 99.98%. Uh, uh, we've just heard from the Central Election Commission saying the turnout was a record, 77.44%, which is pretty incredible and does speak, doesn't it, to the mandate that um, Putin claims to have? It's absolutely uh, unprecedented to uh, this number. And it's achieved uh, with uh, heavy administrative mobilization because people uh, are very dependent on the state in Russia. The state becomes more and more the, uh, the single uh, employer in many regions, in many areas of the economy. So it has this resource to pressure people to go and vote and even to show how they have voted because we see how the, mm, uh, the the bosses of the of the companies of the enterprises were asking people to show them how they how they did vote electronically or uh, to to make a photo of the ballot and to send to them 
which is absolutely illegal even by Russian law, but it happened in uh, unprecedented numbers of cases right now. Uh, this one reason, and another reason that the, the whole system, the governors, uh, the mayors, uh, the heads of the, uh, the state-run companies were keen, were certainly involved in a sort of competition to show uh, the large support because they knew that the Kremlin and the leader want to show that this, as I said, unprecedented, risky, immoral, and uh, uh, de uh, destructive decision to go to the war uh, with Ukraine is supported to comfort the, 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 the consciousness of, of, of the leader. Okay, Alexander Baunov, thank you so much for your insight today. I really appreciate that.